Hey everyone, History Mystery Man here coming to you today from the home office and looking forward to bringing you my most recent adventure in Griffith, Indiana, where I met up with Paul Goldsmith. The man is a living legend at 97 years young, a remarkable man, a remarkable life, so well lived and still living. This man is the oldest living NASCAR Cup Series winner. He's the oldest living AMA National Championship motorcycle rider. He's the oldest living Indianapolis 500 veteran driver. Uh, he won the very last NASCAR Cup race on the Daytona Beach course. Final race there for the NASCAR Cup Series on the beach. Paul Goldsmith won it. In fact, he's the only driver to ever win on the Daytona Beach road course in a cup car and he also won there uh, an AMA National Championship motorcycle event. The only driver to win both those events on the Daytona Beach. Uh, from there, he moved on to the Indianapolis 500 style cars. He raced in only eight championship IndyCar events. That was it. Six of those were the Indianapolis 500, 1958 through 1963. But that was it. He had no experience at Indianapolis. He had no experience in a front engine roadster, yet he went there in 58. He was involved in that first lap crash that took the life of Pat O'Connor uh, in 1958, so he didn't get far, but he came back in 59 and finished fifth with literally no experience. The very next year, 1960, he did even better, finishing third. In 61, he was a threat to win again and fell out with engine issues uh, credited with the 14th place finish, but just a remarkable man, a remarkable career. Uh, he would become, or later become, a very accomplished businessman. Uh, he was a very renowned and reclaimed pilot, airplane pilot. Uh, he flew to all those races. He went on to found, own, and run the Griffith Merrillville Airport in Griffith, Indiana. He still runs the dang thing. It was there where he also built and rebuilt aircraft engines. He still builds aircraft engines at 97 years young. Now on the day I went to see Paul Goldsmith and what a treat it was, he was not feeling well and I think you can pick up on that. Uh, but despite not feeling well, he insisted on going ahead with the interview. A and of course he did. Now I think about this, it, it would to me it would be so cool if someone like how about Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who, congratulations, Ricky, just won the Daytona 500. Um, if a guy like Ricky Stenhouse would reach out to Paul Goldsmith and express his appreciation for all that Goldsmith had done, for paving the way back in that dangerous era when dozens of drivers were dying all around Paul Goldsmith, you know, with the leather Cromwell helmets, the mobile oil t-shirts, and they went at it, no power steering, the skinny hard tires, those ill handling race cars. Uh, yet they defied all of the odds. Certainly Paul Goldsmith did and lived through it, but he re uh, virtually paved the way for these drivers today. Uh, indie drivers too, so they can enjoy their multi-million dollar salaries and all their fame and fortune. I think it would be so cool if a cup driver or two, uh, Stenhouse and some indie car drivers would reach out to Paul Goldsmith and express their appreciation for this uh, wonderful, wonderful man. I was so honored to meet him. I hope you'll enjoy the interview. We did the best we could and uh, I hope he's feeling better. History Mystery Man on duty and at your service. Let's go see what's inside. The airport here in Griffith, Indiana. We're going in. That is cool. I gotta go see that sign. Look at this. The Indiana Racing Memorial Association. Yeah. Isn't that cool? What an interesting man. Can't wait to sit down with him. I heard you were buying lunch, so I come out. Well, I thought I'd Hi. think about it. How are you, sir? <laughs> so I 
I'm, I'm really amazed over your life. You know, I mean, there's not too many humans left that were born in 1925. You know, you lived through the Great Depression. You served in World War II as mm -hmm. a merchant marine. You trained soldiers who went overseas. You became a championship AMA motorcycle racer that led to a NASCAR career uh, that led to the Indianapolis 500 where you finished third and fifth. Um, you became a, a very respected airplane pilot. You're the owner of the Griffith Maryville Airport. Uh, you have lived, from my angle, an incredible life. Does it seem that way to you? Well, if I remember right, I have a log book here somewhere. I've got an awful lot of hours flying. Single engine, they got 40,065 hours. Multi, got 17,361. And then turbine, the jets, 3,499. Wow. Is that how you made your living over the years, for the most part, running the airport here? I started that engine business and uh, we rebuild engines. Aircraft engines? Mm -hmm. I still do. You still do? Yeah. They build engines over there every day. That's amazing. Yeah. Rebuild them. You must, your eyes work pretty good yet, don't they? I mean, you just read some very small print from your old log book, so. Do you wear contact lenses? Hmm. No, you you just see that well. Yeah. That's amazing. That oh, really is amazing. Water. That's okay. You were born before the Great Depression in 1925. Growing up in the Great Depression, what do you remember about it or what stands out to you? How difficult of a time was that for you and your family? Or was it? I was with my uh, grandparents on the farm. Uh, we had no trouble. Yeah. My uncle had a funeral home and seemed like we always had plenty of money. Yeah. Were you, were your, your parents, were they from America? Huh. Yeah. My dad, I uh, got a little crazy later, and they had to lock him up or come find him. And my mother took care of me. Yeah. So y your mother raised you then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zanesville, Ohio. Zanesville. Is that where you grew up as a boy then, Zanesville, Ohio? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Where, where was your interest in racing born? How did that happen for you? I mean... Yeah, I, I rode a motorcycle. I went and I raced a couple races and I made good money. That's what started me racing. I gotcha. And I know you are an AMA Grand National Champion from the 1940s and 50s. You you hooked up with who? Har Harley Davidson somewhere along the way. Somebody introduced you to Harley Davidson and they hooked you up with a factory ride? Yeah, Walter Davidson helped me an awful lot. Did he? How did you get from racing motorcycles to racing stock cars? I met uh, Smokey Munich. Yeah. He put me in one of his cars and I won the race. So from then I was driving a stock car. Yeah, yeah. Smokey and I got along very well with engineering, helping develop the next car, who to deal with. If we go meet with the General Motors people, he'd want me to go with him. And we worked together. He, he was sort of ahead of his time, wasn't he? And super yes. smart in terms of engineering and innovation. He really was. You know, in stock cars, I think Smokey Unique helped me the, mo the best. Yeah. Uh, we could uh, talk and figure out what, what was wrong. I really enjoyed being with him. Yeah. 
you're the only driver to win on the Daytona Beach Road course in a stock car and a motorcycle. Is there anything about running on the beach that stands out to you? It wasn't easy, I know that. Yeah. It was, uh, the turns would get pretty rough, but uh, I didn't have any trouble. Yeah, I, I looked into your career and it says you're the 1961 and 62 USAC stock car champion. That's back when the USAC stock car league was really tough, much like NASCAR is today. Yeah. Uh, you did race in six Indianapolis 500s from 1958 through 1963. Incredible that you uh, finished uh, fifth there in 59 and third in 1960, completing all 200 laps in each event. I know that first race in 1958, uh, you were involved in that first lap crash yeah. um, that, that took the life of Pat O'Connor. Yeah. Is there anything about that crash that you remember? I remember seeing it, and that's about it. Yeah. Did, did you know Pat O'Connor? Did you? Did you mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The front engine roadsters. Did you, well, Ray Nichols was your mechanic, wasn't he? Mm hmm And and how long were you, you were with him a long time? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, once we joined up, I, we uh, did pretty well. Yeah, 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 you did. For only six 500s, you had two top five finishes, which to me is amazing in itself. Now you're in the Motorcycle Hall of Fame, you're in the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America and the USAC Hall of Fame. Do you do you uh, pay attention to racing today at all? Or do you care or do you keep up with it? Yeah, I watch it. Do you? Yeah. W will you watch the Daytona 500? Yeah. Yeah. How did you become a pilot? How did you get involved with the Griffith was it Maryville Airport? Yeah, it used to be Griffith. Found out it was so much easier traveling by air than driving a car. That's why I flew. Yeah. Once you started flying, did you fly to all the races? Mm -hmm. Is that how you got there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. D did you have a favorite airplane you drove or flew? Yeah, Piper 400, I think. Yeah. It was a pretty good airplane. Yeah, yeah. Is that a twin-engine airplane? Mm hmm Yeah. It would haul a good load, travel a long ways. Sure. You have lived for 97 years. Do you have any secrets to your longevity? How, how did you live 97 years? I mean, it, you, did you eat the right thing? Did you eat whatever you wanted? Mm -hmm. You didn't pay attention to what you ate. You didn't take a run at eating healthy, or no, I don't think so. No, you ate whatever you wanted. Yeah, yeah. What was was exercise big to you? Did you exercise? Yeah, I stayed busy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you turned as good as a race driver as you were. Uh, you know, you turned out to be an equally good businessman and. Uh, which, which I, th I think is interesting. You uh, co-founded GNN Aircraft and the Griffith Maryville Airport. How you doing? You doing all right? Still kicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see that. But like you used to say, if you quit working, you die. So you won't right. quit working. So. <laughs> Did you know A.J. Foyt fairly well? Real well. Real well. Mm -hmm. Have you kept in touch with him over the years, even post-racing? Uh, quite a while. Yeah. What about the Unsers? Did you know Al and Bobby Unser? Yeah, I knew them very well. Yeah. I knew all them guys. I love yeah. those, those old front-engine Indy 500 Roadsters. I still say they were the prettiest race cars ever built. I yeah. like them better than what we have now. I think you drove what? An, an Epperly? Was it an Epperly chassis? Yeah. Yeah. Were well, they hard to drive? A uh, front engine roadster, were they hard to drive? I think you can make the rear engine handle better because of the weight than the rear end. When the engine was in the front, it just it didn't steer right. 
it was it was too front end heavy probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You are now the oldest living Indianapolis 500 driver. Yes. That is really interesting. What do you yeah. think about that? Oh, I'm gonna live a little while longer. You feel like you are? Mm -hmm. You look good. You do look I good. Don't have no trouble. No. Yeah. No serious health issues or anything. Mm -hmm. And you're still upright and walking. Yeah, I don't have no trouble. Really. And you still have a full head of hair. How amazing is that? <laughs> it's a pain in the neck you have to cut. <laughs> That's all right. Are you okay? Yeah. I did read on the sign that you are a, a, a World War II veteran. It said Merchant Marine. Mm -hmm. I taught him how to swim. Dive from 60 feet into the water. Things like that. Yeah. I was training a lot of, a lot of soldiers. What, in your opinion, is a bigger race? a bigger, greater race, the Daytona 500 or the Indianapolis 500? Uh, to me, Daytona is more important. Really? Than Indy. Um, Indy is more controlled by the racing people, by the type of cars they have. The stock cars are better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I re when you guys were running at Daytona in the 1960s, you, you didn't have power steering. Oh, no. Those things had to have been hard to drive, yes? No, they no. weren't. It's the way you'd set up the front end in a corner, uh, you make it easier. Sure. And uh, it's the way you set the car up. Yeah. Did you have a lot of input in setting up your race cars? Mm -hmm. you, you played a part in that. Oh, yes. Sure did. Even at Indy? Yeah. Really? Indy, too. It took me a year to learn more at Indy. To develop the equipment to use on the car it kept me busy. Sure. So I did a lot of that. What, what about, tell me about Ray Nichols. How, how bright was he? Real well in dealing with uh, uh, corporations. We put things together and work them out. And he was pretty good. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. He was key in your success, wasn't he? He helped you along? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. Do, do you remember winning an AMA motorcycle race at Milwaukee? Yes, I do. Do you? Mm -hmm. That was dirt track okay. at first. Yeah. And then they paved it. That's right. Okay. Do you remember running at Langhorn in, mm -hmm. in 1953, winning a race there? Mm hmm I know that was dirt. That was tough. Yeah, that was a... Tell me about Langhorn. What do you recall from that place? It was a tough track to drive. It changed a lot during the race. You had to change different crews. How did you go all those decades without any real serious injury? From motorcycles to stock cars to indie cars? I got hurt before. You got hurt, okay. I was over in was it Indiana, straight up against the, the track. I was sitting uh, with my back against the wall. Another guy come along and run over both my feet. I couldn't walk for about six months. That was the worst. But overall, you're doing pretty good health-wise. You feel pretty good overall? I don't have any trouble. All these years, 97 years in, and you're no health issues, and you just keep on chugging. No, no trouble. That is really <clears> amazing. <throat> Well, you've had an amazing life, and you're still having an amazing life, and I really admire you, and I, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking some time with me today. I appreciate you. Glad to talk to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.